Imagine the year is 2050. It's the day that we declared victory on our fight against climate change. We live in a net zero world. Humanity finally removes more carbon from the atmosphere than we emit. We no longer fear devastating forest fires that displace thousands of people each year. We no longer fear extreme weather events. Our seas are stable and our coastal communities are safe. And we no longer fear climate refugees due to extreme heat or drought. International cooperation is at an all-time high. Technologies that do not emit carbon dioxide, what we call clean technologies, fuels our world. We live in the ultimate circular economy, having fundamentally changed our systems and our ways of being for the better. But none of this is real. We're currently headed towards a world of mass migration, world conflict, and irreversible climate change that will be devastating to billions of people. As a director at the National Research Council, I'm a research capitalist, meaning I search the world for the best research ideas to invest in and develop. But my return on investment isn't money, it's emissions reductions. Here's what I've learned after the past few years, looking for all the technologies that will help us build that brighter world. Unfortunately, today we are divided. On one side, we have oil and gas workers who are working for their livelihood and their dignity. And on the other side, we have passionate, often young climate activists who are demanding that oil and gas executives be held to account for the pollution they've caused. One side is fighting for the eradication of an entire industry. The other side is fighting just to preserve itself. For me, it's never been an issue of us versus them. We urgently need to move away from this thinking of us versus them and come together against the real problem, us versus the emissions. I grew up in Windsor, Ontario, across the border from Detroit, Michigan. Windsor, like Detroit, once had a booming automotive sector. In 2008, my dad was laid off from Ford. He's bounced around from factory job to factory job since. I know exactly what it's like to live in a community that is dependent on one industry and then what happens when that industry fades away. That exact same thing is happening today in Southern Alberta, in our oil and gas sectors, in our heavy emission sectors. Another transition is coming. And when this change happens, it's not the oil and gas executives who will be left deeply impacted, but rather the workers in the communities and their families who will be left holding the bag. I can see my dad in these oil and gas workers who just want dignified work to provide for themselves and their families. It's only natural. If someone was coming after you and your livelihood, that you would fight back with everything that you have. But what if there was a different way? What if we could redirect this conflict to the real culprit, carbon emissions? What if no one was coming after anyone's job? What if instead there was opportunity? To do this, we need to build the clean technologies that will allow us to power our world without burning fossil fuels. Now, when you think of clean technology, I'm sure what comes to mind are solar cells and wind turbines. Yeah, solar and wind help us to clean up our electricity grid so we don't have to burn fossil fuels like coal or natural gas for electricity. But that's just part of the story. Electricity generation only accounts for about 30% of worldwide yearly emissions, less than a third. The remaining 70%, they're in hard to abate sectors like transportation and agriculture, making cement and steel and other things that we need for our quality of life. We call these hard to abate because they are impossible or difficult to electrify and the technologies needed to decarbonize them have yet to be invented. A few years ago, I was a PhD student working on an exciting new technology called carbon capture and conversion. 
I was astounded by its potential. Whereas normally it takes thousands of years for fossil fuels to form underground, I was taking water and carbon dioxide and electricity in a little Rubik's cube sized box, and I was making electrofuels in mere minutes. But I quickly realized that this still needs a lot of work and development and in order for it to scale and become viable. It needs engineers and chemists and technicians with deep expertise in thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. These are the exact same people who work in today's oil and gas industry. They have the exact skills that we need to build these emerging technologies and make them more affordable. And this is just one example of an exciting new technology that could revolutionize our world. There are so many others, like hydrogen, which could power our trains and our planes and our freight, or geothermal, which harnesses the heat from deep underground to heat our homes in the wintertime, or biofoundries, which look just like petrochemical plants, but use engineered microbes to build sustainable materials. These are the technologies that could provide good paying jobs for generations to come and save our planet at the same time, but only if we work together. If you work in a hard to abate sector, strive for zero emissions and invest in the clean technologies that'll help you get there. A change is coming. Please, don't wait until it's too late, like the automotive sector in my hometown. If you're a climate activist, keep fighting. But remember what you're fighting for, a just and sustainable world for everybody. Build consensus with trust and empathy and vote for the leaders and the policies that will unite us on this shared vision. I know this can feel overwhelming. Just know that you're not alone. The best thing that you can do is talk to your loved ones about climate change. Every CEO that I've talked to has had their minds and their hearts changed at the dining room table with a conversation with their grandkids, not in some boardroom with a consultant. The stakes are high, but so too is the opportunity. And just because this is a transition doesn't mean we need to leave anyone behind. After all, it's all of us all of humanity versus the emissions. And we are fighting, not for ourselves, but for the generations to come.